People tell me you're not supposed to do disclaimers before you present, but I'm like super nervous and just freaking out. So I was kind of hoping everybody would have you know, gone to a different room, but that's OK. Um, <laughs> um, so I actually chose this title just to be kind of controversial. Um, I don't think necessarily everybody should be using it, but I, I think you're crazy if, if you don't. So that's kind of, anyway. <laughs> oh, wrong button. Um, so a little bit about myself. I'm currently a family history doing continuous delivery and, and we're, we're using uh, polymer there. And on the side, I really enjoy gator ball. If you never heard of that, it's kind of a mix between soccer, handball, and, and touch football. So anyway. Um, and I think you can get my, um, my Git handle my, and anyway, on the schedule, so on the online schedule. So all right, so um, who's Who's, who's made their own web component before? I, and, I, and I love it when people, I love it when you, you know, you're like put on the spot and like half the people aren't even gonna answer no matter what, what I ask, but anyway. Um, so, and then who's, who's used Polymer before? All right, good. I'm, I'm glad we got kind of, a, kind of a green audience. That's good, that's good, I like it. So, um, so Polymer is kind of based on the, or uses the web component spec and the web component spec, um, has four parts, custom elements, HTML imports, templates, and Shadow DOM. Um, so just kind of a piece by piece, custom elements. You can define your own elements, define your own elements, which is just awesome. But anyway, <laughs> um, HTML imports, um, you can actually import um, HTML. So anything that goes in, that can go in, HTML, in an HTML page, you can put in your HTML import and use it in your, in your project on the DOM. Um, and then templates are kind of cool. Um, the, the new template tag, you can surround a section of um, HTML and it's basically inert. So it doesn't do anything. So you're like, well, why would I want to do that? Because then you can use it later. So you can manipulate it and then use it later. Um, so anyway, super cool also. And then Shadow DOM, uh, maybe, maybe the most confusing part of the web component spec, where you have, a, you have an element that has a, its subtree and is kind of hidden from the rest of the DOM. And it kind of gives you two things, it kind of gives you a functional encapsulation where you can do whatever you want inside of your, of, of your element and it doesn't affect everything else. And then also style encapsulation. But a lot of times if we want to do a component and you, you want to style it or, and you'll get style bleeding into your component or out of your component, but with style encapsulation, you can do whatever you want to your element and it doesn't affect uh, the rest of your page. So let's do, uh, let's, let's do a little uh, coding here then. So um, I got a little web component demo here. So We'll just start out with, um, no, that's our import. Hold on, hold on, timeout, timeout, timeout. Okay. Um, so to, do a, to create a web component, um, we're gonna pull in this script and we'll look at that later. And we have down here, we've got a standard DOM element like we always use. And then down here, we've got our, uh, custom, our custom element and the, the spec says that you need to use a dash in your name, and so I prefix everything with MJ. Can't think of anything better because it's pretty cool initials, but anyway. Um, so you'll notice we're, we're pulling in this, um, this JavaScript file right here. So to, to create a custom element, we use the object.create method, and, and we typically use HTML element, but you can also use um, Maybe if you want to extend one of the custom elements, web components that you made, you could use that too. Um, and then we register the element um, with the document. So the browser knows when it, when it sees that, when it's parsing the DOM and it sees that, it knows what to do. And then um, they have these lifecycle callbacks. So I'm gonna attach that to the, the prototype of our element. And I'm just going to give it some inner HTML and say custom element. So 
I think this part is already working, so. Well, that's like super, make that smaller. Anyway, so here it is. Here's our, here's our DOM element, and then here's our custom element that we've pulled in. And, but that's kind of boring, right? That really, really doesn't do much, right? So let's, let's kind of do some of the other, some of the other things. Um, I tried to do, I tried to do live coding, and I, and I found it worked out much better if I just do cut and paste. So um, let's, let's create an HTML import file to kind of show you how HTML imports would work. Um, I think this is the same thing. And then, so you can kind of see it has it has this style in it. It's gonna it's gonna make our divs blue. It's gonna log some stuff, and then it, then it has a div, um, its own HTML in it. And then we're going to we want to pull that in to our file. So up here in our head, we'll we'll pull that in, and then we're gonna change our JavaScript a little bit, our, our created callback. Just let me show you what the difference there would be. Um, whoops, hold on. Is that, is that all right up there? Is that a good size? I lost my place. There we go. So previously we just, we had a, we had a, um, attaching onto the element of this, um, we, we set, we set, the, uh, we set the, the inner HTML. Um, but now we're going to use, instead of just setting some random HTML, we're gonna use the HTML from, from our import. So we're gonna grab, we're gonna grab the content of that import like this. We're gonna do document query selector and give it a selector which is gonna grab that, that link element. And then you do a dot import to, to get the import and then, and, then, um, and then the next step is we're gonna actually read, we're gonna read from that the, the div element in our imported page, and then, and then we'll take that and stick that into the content. So, let's see how it works. Uh-oh. The demo gods have spoken. Um, this is too, I can't even get to this. Oh, that's true, that's true, good point, good point. Can I read property import of null? Did I save it? Oh, look at that. Hold on a second. All right, here we go. There we go, yay. So we imported some stuff from our HTML file and you'll notice that our DOM element here, that's what I was talking about with the style bleeding. Now in our DOM element, so how, so how do we fix that? Um, what time are we at, how are we doing? Okay. So can I just, can I just, kind of jump forward here and say, you can fix that with Shadow DOM. Because <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't touched Polymer yet, and this is taking a little bit longer than I thought it would. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into Polymer, but you kind of get the idea of, of, of the web component spec and, and how to make web components. So what Polymer has basically done is they, they use the web component spec and then, um, And then they sprinkle it throughout with just a little bit of syntactical sugar to make it easier. So you get rid of some of the boilerplate, um, 
and then you get to use Polymer to, to make your custom elements. Um, so let's do, let's do a Polymer demo now. Um, so we'll start out with um, simple HTML file, right? Kind of, kind of the same. We're going, we're going to import our, our element using HTML imports, and we're going to, we're going to have this MJ Word. Eventually, we'll build a, build a Word thing. Um, so let's look at MJ Word. Um, we're going to pull in Polymer. So one thing I one thing I like one thing I've really liked about using Polymer is um, every element kind of has this 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 format. At the at the beginning, you you list your dependencies. So that means if you share if you're sharing your components, um, you just give them their component, and the dependencies are already listed. You don't have to go go and try to figure out what your dependencies are. They're they're just there in your element. Um, and then we, we have this DOM module, and we tell Polymer, um, this, this, is what, this is how we're going to register MJ Word. And then down here, Polymer, Polymer says, Polymer knows that it kind of matches those two together for you. It's, and, just, and, and just makes it easier, and so you don't have to do all the boilerplate of registering the element and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I just threw in some style there to kind of make it pretty, and we got we have some simple template right here that's going to be pulled in, and and then instead of instead of using um, the, the 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 created callback, I'm just going to use the ready callback that, that Polymer kind of puts on top of that Polymer fires after it's it's created. So um, so let's go look at that one. Oh, I already gave it away. So there it is, yay. We've got our demo. Um, we've, got our, we've got our element, I mean. Come on, now, that's awesome. Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's pretty boring, right? All it does is, is display this, right? So let's do, let, let's make it, a, let's, let's, let's enhance it a little bit. Let's make it a little bit more more exciting to work with. So we have, let's make this smaller. So, so let's, um, everybody, everybody likes data binding, right? That's, that's what you gotta do in every demo is show people how to data bind. Um, so let's throw in, I'm just gonna change our style here, right? So it's just not, so it's not too ugly. Um, I'm going to change up our template a little bit. Let's talk about that. Okay, so previously we just had our uh, boring old div. Now let's do an input. Um, and here's how we do some data binding, how we're going to pull the value from the input. And then the element's going to have a property word that we'll read from. And then we'll also set a uh, definition. And we'll see, we'll see how that's done here in just a second. Um, just for right now, I'm going to pull in just some data. And this is actually going to end up going on global scope, but this is just for demos. We don't recommend you do this. Um, and then, like I said, So here's another little part of Polymer where they say, um, and this is kind of that syntactic sugar we were talking about. So instead of, you know, typically on an element, you'd have, a, you'd have an attribute. And, and typically, if you're just doing raw web components yourself, you'd have to read that attribute. You know, you'd have to parse it, read that attribute, and do whatever with it. So Polymer kind of makes that easy for you, and, and they have this um, properties object. And so we're going to tell it we're going to have a, a property that's word, and it's of type string. And then um, they also do this other really slick thing where um, you can set up an observer. So whenever, whenever that value changes, it will fire, it will execute some JavaScript for you. 
and let's throw that in here. Ah, I did it again. So, and we talked about um, up here we have our definition that we're going to set. And so that's just on the element itself. And then we're going to look up our, in our global variable and, and we're going to take the new value and we're going to stick it in um, definition. And then we just need to make one other little change. Oh, I don't have it on here. Excellent. Um, <laughs> we're going to go to, so let's put, so let, let's do two just so you can kind of see the difference. And so we're going to have a word. <laughs> Remember what I was saying about live coding? Um, let's do a rhombus, since that was one of our values. And then a word. And a polygon. We saved everything this time. See what happens. Demo gods do not like me at all. <clears throat> all right, what happened? J word. Oh, uh, we forgot to delete this. Here we go. So Polymer is going to do a selector and it's going to grab the first template. And so that, it grabbed the first template. There we go. That's a little better. It's showing up. A little smaller. Okay, so we have our rhombus. And when it looked up, it looked in our value and it set the value here. And then also polygon, it grabbed the polygon definition. And then we can also, so our, so a couple things happened. We've got our, our data binding there, right? So it will change. And then also our change listener is firing. And so it's looking up the value. So every, every time it changes, it will look up the value. So, <clears throat> All right, so so really quick, um, we don't want to, we don't, we typically don't want to do this, right? So, so let's, look at, let's look it up in a service instead. Um, so let's, let's pretend like we have, uh, all right, so, in, okay. In Polymer, everything is an element, right? So even your services are gonna be an element. And so that they have two sayings in Polymer. Everything's an element and there's an element for that. Um, so I wrote this little um, XHR service that I'm gonna pull in and I'm gonna use it in uh, my word service. Um, and, it, and the word service has a, a method that's, um, that grabs the definition of a word. And then it's going to hit my little local server and it's going to pull the definition up. But the cool thing about that is whatever you're, when you're using a service like this or, an, or, or a different element like that, you don't have to worry about all these, you don't have to worry about all the guts, right? And that's what's cool about Polymer is you can use composition. So, um, so let me show you how you would use that. Um, so we need to tell Polymer that we want to, that we want to use that, so we'll, let's pull it in. No, no, wrong spot. We want to put that in Word, because that's where we're using it, right? And then... So when I first saw this, I was like, what? What are you doing? This is crazy. Why would you want to do that? But now that I've used it, it's... So here's, here's a service. It's a, or here's an element that's not rendered, has no UI. But it's an element on the page that we can use, use in reference. And then the way we reference it is here. Here's our, here's our word change method.
And so the way, you, the way you access it is you have, well, this is the element, right? And so element, so it has a, this is one of the syntactical sugar things. If you, if you give an ID to your element, um, right here I've given it the ID of word service. Um, that gives you a reference to your element right there. And then, and then we, we saw in the, in the other file that, that there's a git definition message that's going to return a, that, well, it returns a promise. And then we're going to set the definition according to whatever is returned back. So now we have new definitions because they're pulled from the little database thing that I have. And when we change it, if, if, the, value's in the, if the value's in the dic dictionary, it will show up. So it has R in the dictionary, it's awesome. And we have a little bug where it leaves that, but anyway, there's cube, so. So, um, we started a little bit late, but we'll, end, we'll end on, try to end on time. Um, so that's it, like I said, I just really enjoyed using Polymer. It just, everything's organized and you're using the platform. You, can, you, know, you can't go wrong with the platform. And I don't know what to say. I just hope on your next project, you really think about looking at Polymer. So thank you very much.